Gonzalez, and I am an advanced instructor here in Oak Harbor, Washington. I am from Jupiter, Florida. My name is Rusty Hendricks, and I am a behavior para with the Oak Harbor School District. I was born and raised in California and moved up here about 30 years ago. My name is Carol Bacla. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. I am a teacher. Uh, I work in the Bellevue Public School District. I teach world language, Spanish, and theater arts, drama, and dance, and other humanities courses. Uh, hi, my name is Sandra Chitecapa, and I am from uh, Ecuador. I was born and I was raised in Ecuador. I'm also a Navy veteran, and I am the wife of a uh, active singer. So, Hi, my name is Matt, and I'm an office assistant manager. I was born and raised in England. Hello, my name is Dawn Bacon Singer. My current profession is dance instructor and choreographer, and I teach a variety of dance classes around um, where I live. I was born in Geneva, New York. My name is Ariel, and I'm Ethan. I was born in Oak Harbor, Washington, and I was born in San Diego, California. I go to Oak Harbor Junior and I currently go to Oak My name is Josephine Hendrick, and uh, I am the founder and director of the Northwest Language and Cultural Center. I was born in Sofia, Bulgaria, in Eastern Europe. My ancestors come from Spain, so I'm a ninth generation Floridian. Um, and eight generations ago, my ancestor, Don Manuel Gonzalez, who was born in the Santander province of Spain in 1767, he came to America in 1784 with the Spanish army. Uh, he went to New Orleans and fought with the Spanish army against the British. He was then granted the title of Indian agent. He traveled through the Indian territories and settled in Pensacola, Florida. My my father's family came over um, in the like 1900s from England. Uh, my mother's family was, my mom was the first one here and she came in 1953. She sailed on a ship from England to New York where she came through Ellis Island and now has passed but lived in Washington. My great-grandparents on my mother's side immigrated from Finland in the early 1900s and they ended up living in Minnesota where there is a large Finnish community. My father was born in Helsinki, Finland and immigrated with his mother when he was 12 years old in about 1946 or 1947. And my, uh, my mom and dad are both English. Uh, I am the only one of my family here in the USA. Um, I have uh, done a bit of family history. And, um, oh well, as far back as the 1400s. Uh, but I have roots in uh, Scotland, Ireland, uh, Scandinavia, and a bit of Eastern Europe as well. I am the first one of my family to come here, so I, I moved to the States in uh, 2010. So my dad immigrated from Germany with his parents at the age of six. His mother is Jewish and his father is not. His father discovered through a meeting that he was invited to that it would be very important if you were Jewish to leave Germany very soon. This was in the 30s. So his parents and he got on a boat traveled from Germany and uh, ultimately landed in New York City and my dad lived most of his life, his young life, in New York. My parents immigrated from Spain and Mexico. But originally, the, uh, my mom was born in Mexico and my dad was born in Texas, so his family originally is from Spain. And in Mexico, they met, fell in love, and moved to the States to start a family. I grew up there uh, the first 10 years and then moved to Italy. And I immigrated with my parents 
in the 1970s to the United States. We were political refugees uh, because of the communist regime, the, uh, what was then called the Iron Curtain, and we escaped uh, and made our way through these multiple countries, which some of which don't even exist anymore, like Yugoslavia. And my father immigrated legally to the United States when I was two years old. So about 30 years ago, um, we were very poor. My father was a teacher. Uh, he had a degree, he had the education, he had a job, not just one, but multiple jobs. And it wasn't enough. Um, I wasn't planned, so that was a huge oops. And my father wanted to give me, my mom, best that he could and as hard as he could you know as hard as he tried there in, in Ecuador he it wasn't working and it was one of the scariest things that he's ever done and it was also scary for us the whole time that he was coming from Ecuador to here to the United States we didn't know if he was alive or if he died it was really sad it was heartbreaking and it was very scary when we finally heard from him we're very happy. He, um, he found jobs that no one else would take. And once he saved up some money, he was able to um, find a lawyer. And it took him years and it took him thousands and thousands of dollars because becoming a, uh, a resident, becoming legal, legal here is not a simple thing that you just fill up a form and you like, you hear this, I want to be a legal resident here. It takes years and it takes thousands of money that we didn't have. I was able to come here to the United States uh, when I was 17, so 15 years after I left, and it was the very first time I saw him. So to be a, an American citizen, I take it for granted because I was born here. Uh, my experience is very different than my father's. He was not born here. He relocated here and he was six years old and he was not crazy about going to a country where he didn't speak the language. He was laughed at. He didn't fit in initially. I didn't have any of those issues. 
So I take American citizen generally for granted, but I know deep down it's a privilege and I am grateful that I'm an American citizen. And I'm glad that I am first generation American. To be an American citizen, um, it feels like it's our duty to like share our culturalism and to spread it around because we come from different cultures and what you see sometimes here, you're gonna show people what we come from. When I was growing up, the idea of America was always one of stable land, land of opportunity, land of freedom, the land of people who were somehow almost semi God and creating a life that was fundamentally good for human beings. Why do you think it's important to recognize the need of a cross-cultural society in our country, one of the most diverse countries? Um, the United States has a very long and ugly history of racism, and I think that in today's environment, a lot of people have forgotten that racism still exists. And I think the best way to combat racism is through multiculturalism and cross-culturalism. The importance of it, not only accepting other cultures, but embracing other cultures and including everyone in our societies. Having a family that comes from the UK influences me in many ways. Um, I grew up with uh, the, like the British language, so language during school and language at home was different. Uh, we were taught. We were taught at home that our language was part of our manners. And at school it wasn't so that way. But um, it doesn't matter because I taught my children the same way, that their manners and their language and how they treat other people um, is, I get from my English heritage. I think it's important to have diversity in, in cultures. Having a family that comes originally from Finland influences me in a, in a couple ways. I kind of feel a pride that my ancestors were not a part of the very tumultuous history of the United States uh, from its early beginnings, uh, the treatment of Native Americans and the whole uh, institution of slavery. Uh, Growing up in a Finnish American household, we always, I always felt a little bit different from other kids my age. Um, There's a great need for cross-cultural uh, communication between the people of this country. Um, nobody in this country is the same or comes from the same place or looks the same. People speak different languages, people have different heritage. Um, it is important for people to communicate with each other as far as languages go, as far as ethnicities go. Um, we are all citizens of this country and we need to work together and help each other out and lift each other up through education. In my case, through working in the theater, working in the arts, teaching opening up the minds of young people. Um, it is crucial at this time that we have a cross-cultural communication and understanding. Having a family that came from Ecuador, from South America, influences me in different ways. Well, first, my dad became a citizen a few years ago, and even though he is a citizen, his, his heart, he still holds a lot of memories, a lot of customs 
to my country. Uh, whenever I miss home, I get to my home and we have a chit chat and I feel at home again. But um, the way that influences me is raising my children. I see the world in a different way. What people in the United States call it hippie, in my country we call it normal. For us, um, breastfeeding. In my country, we see any woman breastfeeding at any moment, and it's not a dirty thing, it's the normal thing. We baby wear our, our children because we want to keep them close to us because it's natural for us. And, uh, when I was a little girl, my grandmother used to tell me that to a fruit tree, if you, whenever you take the fruit, if you're to grow the tree, the tree the next uh, next uh, time that they give you fruit, you won't give you as much. So you have to be gentle with the tree. And I'm still passing on those things to the children. And I know those are little things, but that's what I brought from my country, my family, and I'm passing on to the children. English people are very, I suppose, art. <laughs> we, we have some art quirks, and we all like having a cup of tea for everything. You know, if you feel sad, have a cup of tea. If you feel happy, have a cup of tea. You know, it's it's a cure-all. Um, so that, I mean, that, that's kind of gone away, I think, since I've come here. I believe it's important to embrace a multicultural society because I believe it's important to realize that we're not the same. We aren't all the same person. There are things that you can learn from other people from different countries that we wouldn't be able to learn otherwise. So having a family from Germany um, is really cool because my dad being half Jewish, had to move away. The rest of his family, my family, the Zinger family, all live in Germany. So what's really cool is I have relatives in a different part of the world. And when I go to Germany to see them, which I do, it's really weird because we speak different languages, but we look alike, we act alike, our mannerisms are the same, our behaviors are the same. So I think it's pretty fun and unique to have a large family that doesn't live in the U.S. Having a family that comes from Spain or Mexico is, is different than having a family that all comes from here because we have different cultures and different traditions and all kinds of different times and different... <clears throat> a cross-cultural society is completely 100% necessary for this country because we were originally formed by immigrants coming from other places to start a new life here in the United States, sort of like what we did, like us as a family, and um, so what they do together here is basically create a new culture, which is multiculture in the United States. America is also known, has been known, as the melting pot, a multicultural society for sure, because so many different waves of immigrants have participated in creating um, what our society looks like and what our history has been.